Hey guys, welcome to Belgian Hikers. We are right in the middle of that crazy COVID-19 summer that nobody's gonna uh, forget anytime soon. It also got pretty hot down here, like 30-ish uh, degrees. We really had to get away. We planned a three-day hike in uh, the southernmost province of Belgium. A trail uh, that's, I think it's 78 uh, kilometers, 50-ish uh, miles, uh, called Entre Les et L'Homme. It's a real forest trail. So you spent like 90% of the time uh, in the forest, off-road, really nice. Also, of course, when, it's, when it gets hot like this, uh, we want to take you along for the hike. We want to give you a review of the trail. What do we like? What don't we like? Is this the kind of trail for you? As trails go, this is a fairly new trail. It opened in 2018 and it's proven quite popular since. And rightly so. It is well designed, it is almost completely off-road. You spent most of the time in the forest between pine trees, ferns, brooks and little bridges. Now, it certainly has a couple of very nice viewpoints. But it doesn't really give you the kind of sweeping vistas that you'd maybe get in a place like the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. All in all, we'd say it's perfect for people just wanting to take a break from civilization, though that also means that if you happen to forget your spoon, you will have to craft your own. Right, Steve? Mm. This is of course not the trail for you if you want to get a feel for the culture and history of the region. With one exception, you do pass a World War I memorial right about here, a couple of hours before you arrive in the Vire Ashan camping site. signage is really quite good, clearly indicated with these guys, small green rectangles, not to be confused with these ones. We did miss a turn once or twice in our three days, but I'm guessing that was mostly because we weren't really paying attention. If you want to follow the signs, you'll have to complete the trail clockwise. Most people will start at point one, which is plenty of parking space, and make their way to number 33. We chose to start at number 5 because that's just the kind of rebels that we are. We may have underestimated that first part of the hike, arriving at the campsite a while after sundown. This was a campsite of Biolin, which is nice in the sense that it has a shelter and some picnic tables, but it doesn't have any water or a toilet for that matter, which also means that you'll have to be careful where you set up your tent. The camping site was pretty crowded and we had some trouble with some guys who really felt the need to party until 3 in the morning. Maybe they were sad that Tomorrowland's cancelled this year, we don't know, it, I sincerely doubt they finished the trail. These party animals weren't the only wildlife we encountered. We saw many traces of wild boars, and they even came sniffing around our tents one night. Sadly, they didn't want to be filmed. There are so many hunting fences and hunting huts that it feels like the locals are in some kind of war with the wildlife, and I don't know if they're winning, but they do seem to have the higher ground. And the best chairs. The first day we had no issues finding water. There are some spots near little brooks that really bring out the beauty of this region. But during the second day, the combination of the hot sun, the slightly challenging trail and weight of our backpacks was starting to get to me and Philip. 
So we got a bit careless about refilling our water supplies and we found that once you get past this point, when the groundwater level is low, you are out of luck. There is a source uh, very near to the camping site in Auchan, it's Bois de Bané, but it was dry as well. So we're at the second campsite. We started this morning at uh, 6.45 and it was at uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon that we arrived here. The, the sign says 25 kilometers, but it feels like 30, 35, but we're here, here all alone. And uh, yeah, we're preparing for the, the second night. And uh, I see somebody is there with our water. He went uh, to grab water for us in the next village. So I just came back from a little village uh, two kilometers from here because we are out of water. They were very friendly in the little village. It's called Congo. How funny is that? A nice touch is the fact that the camping sites all have good fire pits, which can make all the difference on cold days. We never got below 22 degrees even at the coldest part of the nights, but of course we made a fire anyway. Though perhaps not the old school way. Because the heat was getting to us, and I should say it was getting to me and Phil, because Steve's in the military, he could probably do the whole trail in one day. But because it was getting to us, we decided to stake Steve's advice and get up at 5 a.m. and do most of the distance before noon. Best decision ever. Now, is this a difficult trail? There definitely are some steep climbs, but nothing beyond what most hikers can manage. If you're in decent shape, and you're comfortable walking 25 to 30 kilometers a day with your backpack, you'll probably be fine. Be warned though that in dry weather, you will have to carry enough water. 